Oh, a very good day to all you patriots out there, and welcome back to Tall Ship Tuesday. Uh, thank you very much for answering my invitation to hear the rest of the tale of uh, Providence's uh, adventures in the Bahamas. It's been a long time coming, but uh, I recently received another letter from Marine Captain John Prevet aboard Providence, and uh, he answers uh, the rest of his adventure described in very satisfying detail. The Rathbun had convinced his officers that his plan to return to the Bahamas was sound. There were strong arguments against mind, but Rathbun believed they could be overcome. So, they provisioned the ship and set a course for the islands. Their adventures began when they were barely out to the harbour. On only the second day of the voyage, they encountered a convoy of three British vessels, which sighted Providence and stood for her. Our Providence is known as a fast and lucky ship, but uh, she was newly provisioned and lying heavy in the water. She outsailed the brig on the sloop, but the British ship was bearing down swiftly. It is Providence's good fortune that Captain John Pitt Rathbun is both an excellent sailor and a clever man. He devised a plan for escape, but it all rested on them being able to stay well ahead of the pursuing ship until nightfall. Alas, at the rate the British ship was gaining, even in the early nights of January, they were in grave danger of being caught. And so Captain Rathbun gave orders to lighten the ship. All the cask of fresh water they had just loaded into the hold went over the side, followed by the firewood. One by one, anything expendable was sacrificed to Poseidon. It was just enough to maintain their advantage. When the sun slipped below the horizon and darkness fell, Captain Rathbun ordered the sailing master to take them slightly off course. Then all sails dropped, all lights doused. Providence's hull had been painted black during her repairs. A fortuitous change, as it helped them uh, blend into the darkness. Sure enough, within the hour they caught sight of the ship's sails, a grey blur on the horizon, as she sailed beyond them in search of her prey. They held their position until dawn, and then reset their course for the Bahamas. The loss of provisions forced them to alter their plans, however, and they pointed the bow to the Isle of Abaco. Once there, they reprovisioned and took steps to make Providence appear to be a merchant ship. According to this letter, this included sending down the tops, topmast and the topsail yard, removing the guns to the hold, and dispatching the crew below decks if another ship appeared on the horizon. Two days later, when she weighed anchor for Nassau Bay, she appeared to be an innocent trading ship rather than a sloop of war. They dropped anchor at the western end of Hog Island. Captain Trevet carefully selected 26 of his marines to go ashore and carry out the mission. With no provisions other than the cartridges in their pocket, two boatloads of men were rowed ashore. But only moments after, the boat had returned to the ship and been hauled up. A gale force wind swung up and drove Providence far out to sea. Captain Trevet and his men were all ashore, safe from the storm, but now cut off from any support from Providence if their mission were to go awry. They were on their own, and they knew it. Ah, I see our, our time has elapsed, and I, um, I, I do have other business to attend to, as I'm certain you do as well, but uh, I shall leave you this to ponder until we next meet. Uh, what would you have done if you were with Captain Trevet or Rathbun at the time? Now, it is uh, not always the smartest option to question your superiors and your officers, um, but it is a luxury that uh, we do have here uh, for those of us who have the opportunity to choose our leaders. I shall just leave you that to ponder uh, until next time we meet. Thank you very much for stopping by, and I shall see you again next time.